tectonics of time, the implication of demographic on machine learning model for prediction of neurologic disorder. Uh, the, is, this is during the Inshago Fellowship in partner which ends and was working with Condition. Uh, and Joseph Domgia from Cameroon, uh, I've born in Valentine's Day, I'm an engineer as long as I remember, uh, have a master in computer engineering and machine intelligence. I like photography, graphic design, and part time hacker. And I'm a new Zealand man, I'm a Rwandi. I have a background in computer science, a master's in machine intelligence, and a master's in mathematical sciences. Then Omniscient is a, a data company, they combining data science and machine learning to understand neurological disorders. And they're doing this by building human brain maps and trying to get patterns within those maps. And uh, it's very important that we understand neurological disorders as it's affecting around 9 million of people around the world. And particularly schizophrenia, which is our focus in this work, is affecting around 20 million people around the world and is increasing fast. As you can see from 1990, it was affecting only 12 million and up to 2017, it was affecting 20 million people. Uh, what we were trying to do in this work is to use connectomics to predict disease, schizophrenia in our case, and from there we were able to identify features, most features that are contributing to our prediction. And on the other side, we have demographic feature, which are from the literature review have confounding are confounding both connectomics and disease. And if we have those dem demographic features, age and sex in our case, the model will, will not generalize well, especially when we are trying to train our models on imbalanced data or only on a certain age range. And from here, we had the challenge to identify how this confounding variable plays a role in the uh, in our modeling in their implication in our machine learning pipeline. Our experiment design was in two parts. The first part is where we meet a reasonable baseline model and we train it on our whole data set using random set of subsets to see how the model perform and how the, these confounders, age and sex impact the, our models then. The second part is how we see how it generalizes on imbalance, imbalance school. Then I will hand over to Joseph for the results. Okay. The method of data collection. First, we put some of our patients in an fMRI, functional uh, magnetic resonance imagery was looking for blood oxygen level in the brain. Then we record data and we did it for 49 patients with schizophrenia and 122 patients, uh, healthy patients. The data is from UCLA, open neuro data. They are publicly available. Then after we got the data, we have to do some pre-processing because you cannot analyze them directly. Okay, what we did here, uh, it's not so complicated, no panic. And uh, we have, we get the connectomics from the data. The connectomics is how, it represents how different areas of the brain interact together. Then when we can use those interactions to understand, to use as an input for our experiment. Um, then in this table, you can see how the data look like after pre-processing. Each number show how two different areas of the brain interact to, together, maybe, the, the audition and the vision, maybe, for an example. Okay, let's go for data exploration. Uh, from the literature, we know that uh, age have a, uh, is highly linked with schizophrenia. 
but the sex, not so much. What does it mean? When you are older, you have higher probability to have schizophrenia. Then we have to be sure during our work that we don't, we, there is no something wrong in our model, that we are predicting age instead of predicting schizophrenia. This is what we are calling confounding variable. Down here is our plot from our own data. We can see that the distribution is similar than that work uh, from the literature review. Then we have to be sure we don't have that problem in our data. This is also more visualization to see how the data are distributed. This is the result from our baseline model. From our baseline model, the best model we have is super vector machine with linear KNL. We use three bulls, uh, XG bulls, random forest, but CSVN was the best model with 85 for accuracy and R on the curve was 78. We use, other, we use the same model with age and sex, sex only and age feature, and we, realized, we saw that there is no so big change in the performance. Then we wanted to do, to check how our model performed with different demographic group. And then so dif different demographic group means that like different size of the data. For I take an example, when we turn on the subject, on the group of young subject, we have 98%, 98 subject. And then here we have a sample of 98 subjects from the whole data set. And we can see that the performance is similar. That means the drop of performance is not due to be, uh, of the young because they are young, but because they are from a subset of 98 it's because of the size of the data. Then we can see the same thing here that our model generalized well because the performance we have here for young and old or for female and sex are close to the performance we have from the data, so the same number of subjects in the data set, even if it's dropped down because of the size of the data. Then we try to, to analyze the feature in process. And of the top 10 most feature identified in our baseline, between four and seven of them appeared in other stratified models. And of, of the 20 more important features from our baseline, we realized that 9 to, 20 to 15 of them appeared in the stratified models. Means feature importance is consistent. Then from our experiments, we have seen that compounding variables do not manifest to the connectomics in a way that can impact our models and the feature importance is more is more consistent. Then the next step we recommend on this work is to pack our codes that's in a way that can be usable to new problems and new variable and try to train our model on a big data set, then apply as a standard practice to new disease. Thank you.